Hello everybody again, my name is Ryan. We're not going to be covering steroids anymore, we're going to be talking about maximizing your muscle protein synthesis. So this is going to be a three part series and we're on part one which is all about training. So the first thing we're going to touch on is training modality. So we've got weights, weight training or anaerobic training and we've also got cardio training as well. Ideally, we don't want to do these two in the same session because we have competing adaptations between the two different modalities. The cardio training will interfere with the muscle protein synthesis rates of our weight training. So ideally, we want to do them about 6 to 24 hours apart. And then also we want to limit the volume of either training modality, depending on which one you're focusing on. And use something that's less damaging. So something like cycling would be a good idea because it doesn't do a lot of damage on the muscle because it's low impact as opposed to something like running on a treadmill. Frequency is something I want to talk about as well. Here we've got our muscle protein synthesis uh, response to some weight training and some protein ingestion. So shortly after someone finishes their weight training, what we see is we get a spike in muscle protein synthesis. Then that slowly comes down after its peak in about 48 hours. It's not statistically significant from the baseline. So this logic or this evidence, it would be a pretty good idea to train our muscles roughly every 48 hours. The thing is, that's not always the most practical idea. Even though we're maximizing our muscle protein synthesis, we've got to take into account our stress recovery adaptation curve. So as we see, the recovery is about 48 hours and we get our super compensation. So we could train as soon as we hit that recovery, but we've got to consider things like connective tissue integrity and central fatigue. If we're hammering our muscles every 48 hours, we're going to be accumulating a lot of fatigue. And for some people, this is just going to be too much to them and it's not going to be sustainable. So if we train a muscle group every two to four times a week, then we are going to pretty much nearly max out our muscle protein synthesis, also keep our connective tissue healthy. And the other consideration is how advanced you are. These beginners and novices have a longer muscle protein synthesis response time to weight training, so they can get away of training less often. They can also get away of training more frequently because they can't do as much damage to themselves unlike an advanced person who will have a shorter muscle protein synthesis time but they can do a lot of damage themselves so you can take it either way really as to how frequently you should train each muscle but if you give it at least 48 hours and you can handle the volume then it's good to go now here's an interesting concept i want to touch on so we've got another graph here with a study and on the y-axis we've got s6k activation so what that is, for those of you who don't know, S6K is an important protein in muscle building. So this on, on the waxes, we've got how much it's been phosphorylated, which means how much it's been activated. After one bout, we've got massive activation of S6K. After 12 and 18 bouts, we can see that the activation has been down-regulated. After a period of two weeks of detraining, and then somebody comes and does some training again, we get this big spike. So in the long run, taking deloads, so like a week of very light training where we're not really actually triggering much of a, a muscle protein synthesis response, can really resensitize our muscles to a big response in muscle protein synthesis. So that's just something to consider for those of you who like to skip the deloads. Next, we're moving on to volume. I've got a little graph I've made here myself. On the y-axis again, we've got someone's percentage of their maximum growth that they'll get from a, a single bout of resistance training. And across the x-axis, we've got the number of sets they would do in a session. So you can see the first three sets, we get quite a big uh, percentage of our maximum growth. And as we go from about four sets, it starts to level off. So these people are doing 12 sets per session of any sort of weight training. They're really just burning calories. 
So four to five sets is where we're getting a good, robust muscle protein synthesis response to exercise. And anything much more than that, we're going to be seeing diminished returns, but we're still going to be accumulating fatigue, even though we're not actually stimulating extra growth. As we come do seven sets, we're just accumulating fatigue and we're not really getting extra growth, maybe a few extra percent. In terms of intensity, heavy training, so heavy loads or light training, light loads, so 20 reps and above, can both stimulate large amounts of hypertrophy. It doesn't matter if someone's lifting heavy or light. What is important is that we take these sets fairly close to failure. So in two to three reps is a, is a pretty good uh, benchmark for most people. So from the literature, we know that going to concentric failure, which for those of you who don't know is where you can't push the weight anymore because the muscles are too fatigued, is slightly better than no failure. But with concentric failure, we can't accumulate as much volume because we're too fatigued to perform sets after that. So with a less volume, we have a less hypertrophic response because volume overall is one of the key drivers of strength and hypertrophy. And also with concentric failure, we get a disproportionately large amount of fatigue compared to the work you do. So we need to manage this fatigue with our training to get a solid, robust muscle protein synthesis response from a decent, fairly hard set. And that was it. That was fairly quick. I like to keep these videos quick now at the moment. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be on nutrition.